A recent study in the British Medical Journal found that taking fatty acids from fish, polyunsaturated fatty acids from, derived from fish, may actually help prevent breast cancer. And that made me wonder, how, how much can we rely on this re research? Because I know that there's a lot of things, um, a lot of different variables, like mm -hmm. BMI, you mm -hmm. know, things very specific to each person's life who's taking place in a study like this. How much can we rely on this to be, I mean, can we count it as causative or is it just correlative? I mean, at this point, this is a meta-analysis, so, so it's a little bit hard to say. So the difference between a straight study and meta-analysis means that these researchers went into the literature and they mm -hmm. found every single study that has tried to, to talk about a link between polyunsaturated uh, fish acids. Mm -hmm. Polyunsaturated, polyunsaturated fats fatty in acids fish. Yeah, from fatty fish. acids coming from yeah. fish. We're struggling with this. PUFAs. Um, they've looked at the relationship between PUFAs and breast cancer across studies. And mm -hmm. usually what happens in a meta-analysis is that they'll systematically remove studies that they feel um, aren't very rigorous. And then they'll go through and look at this pool of all these different studies and see if there's a net effect. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, there were 26 pubu uh, publications that met inclusion criteria. So it represented 20,905 cases of breast cancer and 883,585 participants overall. So that's a pretty robust uh, study pool. Mm -hmm. But all of the different studies are going to be slightly different. So they can only look for net effects across the studies. And it's a good point that you brought up. BMI has a huge link mm -hmm. to propensity for cancer, specifically for breast cancer. So, and this doesn't account for that. No. So I it's mean, very hard to see. There's going to be some confabulating factors here. But the larger kind of the study pool, the less effect they have. Of course, the reason that this is important is because we've seen animal studies mm -hmm. that show links, but we've never actually seen studies in human populations. The results have been really kind of up and down and inconclusive. So this is the first time that um, researchers have, have decided to look at all of the available information and do a large meta-analysis of that information using stati statistical techniques to try and understand whether or not a link does exist. But I think that's all we can say. There may be a link. There may be a link Correlative. is the most we can say. Yeah. Correlative, not, not causative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this brings me to the topic of taking supplements in general to to prevent, you know, cancer or yeah. bad health or obesity mm -hmm. or all kinds of negative health, ad adverse health effects. Um, it's a huge industry. Huge. And I'm wondering, like, and how much of this can be verified? Yeah, these statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug yeah. Administration. Every single vitamin bottle is going to say that, right? Because it's not a treatment. Uh -huh. You know, they say, you know, this is not meant to diagnose or treat any disease because it's, there haven't been enough studies to show efficacy. So, you know, I think studies like this are really important because looking into different supplements with rigorous science will tell us whether or not they really do have the intended effect. I mean, for the most part, I feel like taking vitamins is just like, you know, as they say, it's really expensive piss. Like really? You yeah, you don't even really absorb most of the vitamins that are in a multivitamin. You know, there are ways that you can get certain nutrients out of your food. There are some supplements that you can take that, you know, have really been kind of designed in such a way to increase absorption. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times you might already have enough of that thing and taking a ridiculous amount is just going to make your liver have to work overtime to be able to process it. Yes, obviously, if you are B12 deficient and you go to the doctor, they do a, a workup and they say, oh, you're really B12 deficient. Maybe we should give you a B12 shot. And then they do your blood work again and show that your, your kind of levels are regulating. This is science. This is good medicine. But I think a, we're all just like, let's just hedge our bets and just eat everything in pill form. I feel form. like it is a big gamble because it's just like it does say these these are not evaluated by mm -hmm. the FDA and it's just like well I think it will help me you know I'm I, I'm a good healthy person I'll take yeah. these vitamins but it just I don't know if I'm buying expensive piss or if I'm <laughs> saving my own life and I don't I don't know where that line is and well and the problem is it's a it's a huge gray area because every single vitamin is different yeah you know what I mean and, and, I don't and know every single person's biochemistry body. is different <laughs> and so it's not that easy and sure maybe you had your bets I don't think that there's a lot of evidence or there's really any evidence to show that it's necessarily dangerous. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the vitamins that you can get over the counter, it takes large quantities until you reach any sort of toxic effect. Like vitamin C, for example. Vitamin C is interesting. You know when you've taken too much. 
You know. That's a nice way of saying diarrhea. <laughs> you know. Um, it's, it's kind of self-regulating. You can't really overdose on vitamin C. Your body tells you when uh -huh. you've taken a little too much vitamin C. And so you can kind of figure out what your dosage is, depending on your situation. But yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people you talk to in the scientific community are kind of like, vitamin C? Yeah, okay, citric sure. acid. Yeah, okay. But some of the others, we start to get a little bit more well, like, I'm not sure. it's kind of a trend right now to, to maybe like get a B12 shot in the butt or in your body somewhere to mm -hmm. give you yourself more energy. But yeah. is that is that is healthy? That effective? Is, is that it healthy? effective? I don't know. We don't know. <laughs> you know, the I think that educator doesn't know. Well, it's you know, it's difficult because there's yeah, just a lack of research into this. And like you said, it's a huge industry with a large profit margin involved. Mm -hmm. And so I think studies like this one talking about fish fatty acids um, it, they do seem promising. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm not here to give health advice. I'm not even qualified to give any sort of health <laughs> advice at all. But I think doing your research is really important. One of the most important things that I would take out of this is that when you're getting treatment for anything, know what your diagnoses are, know the names of the medicines that you take, understand why you take them, really be actively involved in your health care plan. It's probably the most kind of responsible and important thing that you can do. All right. And we still don't know if this is good for you or not. <laughs> There's your advice. <laughs>